Hey, friends, Evangelist Rob here, just coming on you, bearing my soul, delivering my soul. Some of the things the Lord has showed me as of recently that are going to transpire and manifest and come to full fruition on the earth. One of the things the Lord spoke to me several weeks ago, I'm unapologetic about it. I was shaken, a little apprehensive to really even release it publicly, but the Lord says what was just on the earth. The pandemic, the pandemic, the COVID, where I reside in New York, the hardest hit state. Many of people I know got sick. Some passed on. I lost two family members. And then the race riots with the killing of Mr. George Floyd. My condolences, certainly as a minister of the gospel, but the Lord's absolutely spoken to me. He said, Rob, what's coming on the earth? It was this simple. I'm not going to add to it or take it away. He said, what's coming on the earth is going to be 10 times worse than what was just taking place as of recently. And it's going to be soon. And I'll be honest, it shook me to the core. Many of you, if you haven't seen Three Dreams by Pastor Dana Coverstone on YouTube, the Lord showed this man of God what's coming on the earth even as close as this fall. Now, if this doesn't happen... You sit, come back to me and say, you're an idiot, Rob, or a buffoon, or a jerk. Well, maybe the prayer and the crying out diverted it, diffused it, maybe, because the Lord says in Joel, who knows if he'll relent. Maybe God spared the city like he did when they bargained with him and said, hey, if there's 50 righteous, will you spare the city? 20 righteous, 10. Now, Hezekiah was done. The prophet said, pack your bags, you're going to die, and he pleaded turned his heart bitterly towards the wall, and God gave him a life, ex a 15-year life extension. So the prayer can change the Lord's heart and mind. I don't, I don't understand everything. It's a mystery. But we never pray to change God's mind. We pray to find it. We found the mind of the Lord in this hour. Many people that are prophetic are seeing a storm coming, my friends. The beginning of birth pangs tribulation, calamities, I'm not here to bring you down, because simultaneously we feel at the same time it's going to be the great and terrible day of the Lord. Great if you're on God's side, not so good if you're not. In other words, anything great can happen, but at the same time there's these tipping points and these boil, these bowls that'll they'll boil over on the earth where anything terrible can happen. Now, I'm not a negative guy by norm. Not a doomsday guy or an end times dude or Jesus. But I'm telling you, there's an alarm that's being sounded. And Joel says, sound the alarm in my holy mountain. Blow the alarm. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm in my holy mountain. So we believe the great separation has not only begun, but here. You know, the separation of the wheat and the tares, the angels, the demons, heaven and hell, light and darkness. God's, it's going to be evident who's of the Lord and who's not. We also believe Isaiah chapter 60, Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord's risen upon me. The gross darkness is going to cover the land. But friends, the light shines the brightest in the darkest times. So I'm asking you to send this video or paste it and copy it to as many people as you can. Because we need to enter into prayer and intercession to try and halt and thwart back the coming judgment that's going to come on the church and the wrath of God that's going to be poured out on the world. Now you may say, well, Rob, the full wrath's not going to come to laugh you the tribulation. Listen, I'm not here to debate, I'm not looking to be right with a man. I'm looking to be right with God. But if you read the book of Revelations, it's evident there's going to be times of trying. And it's it's over. It can be overwhelming, but we need to stay in the peace of the Lord. Jesus said, "In the in the world you'll have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world." He said, "My peace I leave with you." So we need to stay in prayer and the Word, really being separated and sanctified and consecrated in the presence of the Lord. We're imploring people, if you're backslidden or cold of heart or lukewarm, get right with God quick. Repent. Give your life back to Jesus. If you're not born again, you must be born again, Jesus said. Today's prom tomorrow's promise to no man. 
So let's just wrap this up. I want to pray for several minutes. The Lord's issuing a solemn and a sober and a sacred assembly. It's many times in the Bible, in the book of Joel, predominantly the Lord would issue a solemn assembly. And even as this September unfolds, they're calling for a solemn September assembly. Father, we thank you. We're asking you to spare this city, spare this church, spare this nation, spare countries around the world from what's coming. But Father, we're excited. We know it's a great hour of harvest. We believe a billion souls are going to come into the kingdom of God. Many souls are going to be one to Jesus. You're wooing and calling people to come back home to get their life right with you. Prodigals that are backslidden and cold and lukewarm. If you're not born again, the most moral person is not making it to heaven in their own works. It's by grace you're saved, not of works. It's a gift. Invite Jesus into your heart. Let's go right now. Hallelujah. Don't turn that off. Say, Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross of my sins. Thank you for being my Lord and Savior. Bless you if you prayed that prayer. Heaven applauds you. Angels are throwing a party. Comment any way you want. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. The Lord bless you. Amen.